So I'm Nupur Rajay. I direct the multiple myeloma program at Mass General Cancer Center and I've been doing this for the last uh, more than 15 years now. Over the last several years, we've made multiple advances and one very big advance is cell therapy. Hey Sandy, hello, how are you? I'm Terry. This is the story of CAR-T, a form of immunotherapy where a patient's own immune cells are harvested, re-engineered, and then put back into the body to go to work. The fatigue has all gone. Okay. The pain has all gone. Um, I feel perfectly, I would say, normal. It's amazing. Like, it, it just goes out of your mind sometimes, which is nice. When you're, when you're on the medication all the time, you're always thinking about yeah. it. For multiple myeloma patients over the last 15 and 20 years, once we start patients on treatment, they pretty much stay on treatment forever. So I will tell you that I was the biggest skeptic when we first used CAR T cells. And I said, maybe we'll get a response. Maybe it'll last for a little bit. But when we saw complete responses in patients who basically failed every other therapy for myeloma, that was absolutely incredible. More than two years ago, Gene Estabrook found his way into Dr. Raj's care for an MGH clinical trial using CAR T for multiple myeloma. His cancer had eluded every standard treatment option available. At that time, nobody realized how aggressive my my cancer was, and, and then I done the, all the regimens and went into the maintenance. But as I do my labs and my checkups each month, I noticed that it was creeping up a little. All of a sudden, you start realizing that you know perhaps you're not going to see your kids and your grandchildren. And, There was this remote hope, like around the corner, they're going to discover something. They're that close, is what it felt like. And then all of a sudden, there was a talk about the CAR-T. And then it's like, oh. Up until the time that I met Gene, he was uh, constantly on treatment. And at that time, I think Gene did not have a lot of other options. He had failed everything, and he was willing to try anything. You know, it, there's a lot of parts which go into making sure that our patients can actually successfully get CAR T cells. Having been able to recruit Marcella and have Marcella be at MGH has been huge. And then to have superstars like Matt helping her clinically, creating a clinical service. CAR T is a really exciting, relatively new kind of therapy where we take patients' immune cells and engineer those immune cells to be able to target the cancer. So you have to remember how powerful the immune system is. You know, when you give a vaccine, you're basically putting a big red flag up to the immune system to say, this should not be here. And then the immune system goes through its process of learning and identifying the bad part. With cellular therapies, we are basically taking all of the instructions that the body would naturally learn on its own and just completely imprinting them into the T cell making them already know what we want them to do, and then having them go and do it. Marcella Moss and Matt Fregalt were featured in our CAR T story from the first annual Center Stage Gala. And it's worth mentioning here because of something that Marcella said at that time. Um, you know, my goal is to be able to treat at least three cancers in clinical trials in the next three years. It would be easy to forgive this proclamation knowing now that MGH would soon pivot its energy and resources toward a pandemic. But fortunately, for some very real people waiting in line for newfound hope, there's nothing to forgive. Currently, there are four open trials of CAR T cells that have emerged from Marcella's research, and one for glioblastoma, brain cancer, is expected to begin within the next year. We've started out with a handful of trials. We now have up to 30 to 40 trials. We've treated hundreds of patients, and excitingly, we've actually created our own CAR T cells, and um, we're giving them to patients for the first time. So it's pretty exciting to see the evolution of the program, to see the number of patients we've treated, and now to have years of follow-up with many of those patients to see them continuing to have benefit from the therapies that you know were somewhat experimental years ago and have now become standard of care. There's definitely value in basic science for the sake of science. But the kind of science I like to do is the one that, where I see that there's a goal in mind, and that goal is to treat cancer.
The typical ways that we fund basic research are through NIH grants, and it's this very competitive process. And we've actually been quite successful in that. But what NIH doesn't fund is the translation. So it doesn't really fund the kinds of studies that allow you to test a new therapy in patients. Um, and so for that, we've really been dependent on philanthropy. We have come together in a way to translate this therapy from an idea, from a laboratory hood, um, into a patient's room. And that has taken a lot of people coming together. And, and I would say with the pure incentive of trying to help the patients. Uh, suggesting that our, our design modification can resist relapse. Really nice, so that's gonna be your winning car. That's gonna be the winning car. The relationship that I have with my patients, they're like my family. They're the driving force for what I do, so I, I love it. One of the most amazing things about cellular therapies is you, you not just potentially treat a disease, but give someone their life back. After the, the cells were put back in, and, and you just feel good, you, you know, you're not, not feeling ill from the chemo. Uh, it's, it's really like you don't have any treatment. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like yeah. normal. For her to accept me into that trial, you know, it's, uh, been a good year and a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I felt really good. It's had to, I guess there's not much you can just thank or forgive me. It's okay, yeah, it's okay. Jean Estabrook is healthy and alive today because of CAR-T and because of the tirelessness of people like Marcella, Matt, and Newper, as well as the entire New England community, including all of you here tonight. A place like Mass General doesn't happen by accident. It happens because you make it happen.